what's best for us. Uh, I now have great pleasure in uh, inviting the speaker for the concluding talk today. It is uh, Mr. Srijit Kesi. He has 18 years of corporate experience and currently works for Dell as a director in product strategy and had been associated with uh, Air India and Infosys in the recent past. He holds a full-time MBA from the Indian Institute of Management, Kolkata, in marketing and BTEC in electronics engineering from Cochin University. He is a senior corporate faculty with the Art of Living Foundation and has facilitated trainings for uh, leaders from across the industries on leadership tenets and achieving holistic excellence. He is also passionate about Ayurveda and holistic wellness and is a co-founder co of an Ayurvedic wellness center based in Bangalore. Uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Srijit. Uh, as you can see from this illustrious biodata, he's a holistic person himself. He will talk to us on meditation yeah, techniques. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kumar, uh, for the, the kind introduction. So a very good, good, good afternoon to everyone, just 15 minutes past the afternoon. So, um, and thank you, Dr. Mahesh, for inviting me. Um, and I was a little wary of joining this webinar because I found that I'm the only non-medical professional in the whole. Um, somebody is on unmute. Uh, Okay. Um, so, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, so I was a bit wary of, uh, you know, addressing medical professional when I'm the only non-medical professional in the whole audience, um, in the whole panel, right? Um, so, with, without much ado, uh, let me get into the, uh, the topic. Right. So the topic I've given is the medical, uh, sorry, the meditation and the mental well-being. Okay. So you know, I've been I'm here for the last one hour. So really, really uh, excellent uh, presentations and perspective from all the fellow panelists. Right. Mostly talking about the postures, how to manage the emotional part of it. Um, and I would say this session of mine would be complementing that. Right. And I don't have a presentation. Yeah. Because it's very difficult to put all this mental well-being on a presentation, right? Rather, I think I, I would give you a real experience, yeah? So that's my plan. Uh, that's how I structured my 10 minutes. I have already passed one minute now. Um, so if you see any profession for you to be successful, you need to focus, right? Regardless, whether, whether you're a eye surgeon or a pilot or an engineer, what you really need is focus, right? You need to focus on the activity that is in hand. But if you see that, if, if you only focus for a long period of time and you don't relax, that can cause all these kind of issues that we just talked about, right? It can be a posture issue from a physical standpoint. It can be stress from a mental standpoint. Hence, to be successful in any, act, uh, any of your professions that we do, is the ability to focus and at the same time, ability to relax. And if you see many times when you focus, we are not relaxed. And when we are relaxed, we are not focused, right? Now, is it possible to have a state of mind where you're focused at the same time you're relaxed, right? And that's a million dollar question, right? So that's what I'm going to address now. How to be focused and at the same time, how to be relaxed, right? Now, many times you think, okay, I need to be focused and I want to be relaxed. I can decide, right? But body and mind works at two different principles. So if you want a six pack body, you can't just relax and say, let the six pack come. It doesn't happen, right? If you want a six pack body, you need to go and work out in the gym, right? But if you want a six pack mind, you need to learn how to relax. Yeah. So telling yourself how to relax is like me telling you right now, do not think about a monkey. The moment I thought, told you not to think about a monkey, you already thought about it. Right? It's so difficult to tell the mind to do what you want to do. Right? So hence, how to manage the mind is through the breath. Right? If you observe, every emotion that you go through has a specific rhythm of breath. 
For example, how do you breathe when you're angry? If you observe when you're angry, you breathe faster. Regardless which part, what profession you do, which part of the um, world you are in, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a universal uh, law that when you're angry, you breathe faster and shallow. And when you are sad, hmm, you breathe out a long sigh of breath, right? And when you're happy, the incoming breath is more, more and the outgoing breath is slow. And this proves that every emotion that we go through has a specific breath pattern, right? So the trick of managing the mind is through the breath. As I said, the every emotion affect your breath. Now I would say the converse is also true, which means managing the breath, you can also manage the mind, right? And as I said, you know, it's easy to talk so many things about mind, but difficult to practice, yeah? So I thought I would give you a three minutes of experiential session rather than talking a lot of about it, yeah? So one way all of us can do, I mean, regardless whether you're a surgeon or any other profession, if you are into, a, uh, if you are into an activity which requires a lot of focus is something called Nadi Shodhan Pranayam. Uh, it's called Nadi Shodhan Pranayam. Yeah, so it's very simple. So Nadi Shodhan Pranayam, what it does is it cleanses all the energy channels in your system within a couple of minutes, yeah? So how do you do it? It's very simple. So what you do is you can close your right nostril and slowly breathe in through your left nostril. Now close your left nostril and slowly breathe out through the right. Now breathe in through the right nostril and breathe out through the left. And continue left to right and right to left. And keep your attention between your eyebrows. Keep the spine erect. And attention on the breath. Slow breaths. In and out. Just one more round. And this time as you breathe out through your left nostril, you can relax your hand. And once you have Done with the breathing out through the left nostril, you may relax and close your eyes. You can sit with your eyes closed and first listen to any noises around you in the room. If could be people are talking to you, talking around you, maybe sound of the traffic, the birds chirping, any sound around you. Listen to it and relax, but listen to them keenly. And let's breathe in and slowly breathe out. Now become aware of your own body. Take your attention to your own body. Let us become aware of our feet.
become aware of your knees, the calf muscles and the knees. the thighs and hips. Become aware of both your legs. Let's take a breath in and slowly breathe out. Now become aware of your lower abdomen region, the genitals, lower abdomen. Become aware of your navel and the stomach region. Become aware of your chest region. The shoulders and the arms. the neck and throat, face, the head and the whole body. Relax your whole body. Let's take one more breath in and slowly breathe out and as you breathe out, feel the weight of your body on the chair where you're sitting. Now become aware of your breath. Observe your incoming breath and the outgoing breath. As you're breathing in, you would notice that your body is getting a little tensed. The body is becoming a little tight. And as you are breathing out, you feel the relaxation in your chest region and the whole body, in fact. Now observe the thoughts in your mind. Whether they are good thoughts or bad thoughts, do not resist. Just be a witness to all the thoughts in your mind and welcome them. Let the thoughts come. Keep looking at your thoughts. Do not leave a single thought unattended. And welcome them. Breathe in and slowly breathe out. Now become aware of the feelings you're having right now. Observe how you're feeling. Pleasant or unpleasant, do not resist. Just observe the way you are feeling right now. Pleasant, unpleasant. Maybe impatient or impatient. Just observe your feelings.
Breathe in and slowly breathe out. Relax completely. You are peace and you are joy. Again, become aware of your feelings, the thoughts in your mind, if any, your own body, the environment, and very slowly, whenever you feel like, you may open your eyes. You may slowly open your eyes and observe how you were when you closed your eyes and observe how you're feeling right now. And there will be a sea of difference if you have done it properly, if you have closed your eyes. Am I right? Yeah, at least I can see Dr. Kumar and Dr. Saril. I can look at your face. I don't need your answer. So this is it. That's it. Yeah, so all the experience speaks a million words. Yeah, so, but you cannot learn how to fight a war in the war field. Isn't it? Same thing, you cannot learn to be relaxed while at work if you haven't been trained so. So I would say that regardless of whatever profession you are in, every day morning, if you spend 15 minutes for yourself being selfish, if you're 15 minutes selfish for yourself, rest of the time you will be more productive when you're selfless. Yeah, that's the message I have for all of you. And um, there are a lot of guided meditation by Art of Living in YouTube. You can just put one of them um, and then just practice meditation every day morning, 15 minutes. You can just do this Nadi Shodhan Pranayam. If you have any uh, surgery happening, you can just do it before two minutes before your surgery, five minutes, you would see that you will go with a much calmer mind. You are more focused and relaxed at the same time. And with that thought, um, I would hand over to uh, our moderator, Dr. Kumar. If you have any questions, I'm ready to answer. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for that experiential uh, exercise that you put us through. I'm sure every one of us enjoyed it, really. And um, I have a, a query for you. Uh, most of us uh, lament that we are too busy for all this. Uh, you know, uh, and as somebody said, it's like a busy driver who says he's too busy driving and he has no time to even fill gas in the vehicle. So if we don't find time for ourselves, then the vehicle will stop one sometime or the other. So we definitely need to carve out some time from our daily routines for ourselves. But I have a question for you. Uh, many times we go through our uh, surgical lists of the surgeries that we have merely by muscle memory. And as we are operating, we are thinking about something else. We are thinking about how to tackle the patients in the outpatient after the surgery or thinking about the next case that is coming in, et cetera. And we wonder at the end of the day how we went through the list. And if we, if we just go through that, we many times have done it from muscle memory. Now can surgery, the very act of surgery itself be treated as meditation and focus intensely on the particular step of surgery that we are doing so that the two benefits, we can avoid doing meditation separately. And if you're meditating on your surgery, you can pick up any problems at an early stage so that the surgery itself can be controlled. So any complication can be you know, addressed immediately. So what are your thoughts on this? Okay, so good question. In fact, there are multiple questions. I will address one by one. I'll start with a beautiful quote by Mahatma Gandhi. So he said, today I'm very busy, so I'll meditate twice. Yeah. Uh, and second thing about your two questions, which are slightly contradictory with each, uh, within themselves. One you said is while you're performing surgery, they, we sometimes think about outpatient. The moment you're per se, uh, performing surgery with your muscle memory and you're thinking about uh, the patients outside, that's not meditation. But when you are really 100% into that surgery, you are right. It's a meditation in itself. 
right? So, so good question. So, how do you uh, how do you manage this? Is and when you see the, anything that happens to your muscle memory, you cannot innovate. Muscle memory is something which you have been trained. You are doing, but if there is some, I don't know about anything about the eye surgery, but if there is something well, you need to innovate in the present moment, if it's muscle memory, you cannot innovate. So when you meditate, you get that um, you get that skill to be innovative in the present moment. You can be spontaneous, which uh, as as the situation uh, is required, right? Um, so so and you know about not having time for meditation. See, we have. in every day morning however busy we are we brush our teeth right we never say that hey i am very busy so i didn't brush the teeth today so you stink same thing happens when you don't <coughs> clean our mind right so like dental well being is very important i would say that mental being is more important right now any kind of profession you see that there is depression there is stress everywhere right it's omni it's like almost second to god omnipresent is stress right so i would say that regardless of your profession if you start the day with meditation what i have seen is that um, you'll be more productive because your mind stays in the present moment and you'll be more effective at your work right sir a sound mind in a sound body as the expression goes and all of us are really uh, a cocktail of the chemicals in the brain as men of science we should be aware that we should be trying to produce the right kind of chemicals in the brain so that the motor functions happen optimally so uh, an excellent uh, talk by dr uh, mr shrijit uh, any other uh, queries from the dr. panel dr murli sir has a question i have a comment. one question to shrijit uh, often i used to actually put on music when i am doing surgery yeah and sometimes i was not sure i am not sure i am ambivalent whether it is really helping me or not or distracting me sometimes i feel it is distracting me because i am listening to a nice uh, raga lapna or mahamad rafi in the background sometimes i feel it is helping me what are your views on that does putting a music like this during your surgery is it advisable not advisable or what is your take on that and others take also on this i would like to know thank you dr murli that's a good question see our brain has two parts all of you know that you being doctors um, you are more expert in that so left brain is logic science right brain is art and music yes and if you see when you have to do your work your surgery you need to 100% be on the left brain because you are thinking um, you know you need to do what's the next procedure you need to plan that's all left brain but many times when you play the background music you see more relaxation because the right brain also gets activated right so there is nothing wrong uh, in putting the music behind um, uh, while you're doing i mean that's a not a bad as long as it's not very loud and disturbing for others i would say it will help you relax right so there's nothing wrong doing that yeah. mudli i think uh... i don't know whether i'm right or wrong uh, probably an instrumental music may not distract you as much as vocal music because then you start identifying with the singer and uh, go into the details of style of singing and stuff like that maybe light uh, instrumental music as we see in the background on many airplanes as we get in there so that kind of a lilting soft music in the background may be soothing more soothing than uh, now stirring up your passions by as listening to a vocal singer i don't know whether i'm right or wrong but really kumar because i am sure all of us are have okay my ms songs in our head i have listened to it over and over in shankanetra i i i think it sure relaxes the surgeon to some extent more so over the patient i many times if i for normal surgery not when i am doing a very complex surgery i many times ask the patient what he would like to hear uh in the background and a low volume music to that effect really helps in relaxing the patient that's what i've observed so if there are no other uh, comments uh, mahesh maybe decide to call it a day and conclude today's uh, meeting thank you much thank you thank you very much uh, be- before we end mahesh Uh, because you are now the chairman of the scientific committee of vrsi 
uh, I just thought there is not much of material available on the net either when discussing topics of this kind. So can we have a, a subunit of RedNet uh, dedicated to collecting data on some of these things, maybe confidential also, and then uh, putting up uh, some of the thoughts that come in there uh, uh, to generate data about uh, these aspects, particularly mental well-being among with your retinal surgeons. Collecting data can, and blackmailing people. Can help as a BRSI initiative also. Yeah. Sure, sure. I'll I'll work on it. As I said, as uh, uh, Dr. Sarid wanted to work on the economics part of it, and I'm sure we can do that. We'll we'll work on it, uh, Kumar. And it's thank my pleasure, duty to thank you all.